I'm Perry Farrell, lead singer, Jane's Addiction. I'm Eric Avery, I play bass. And I'm Stephen Perkins, I play drums. Beautiful, Glad Jeff. to be here. Thanks for joining us today. It's good to be nice here. To be here. <laughs> Jane's Addiction will be in Australia soon for the World is a Vampire Festival, which starts in Brisbane on April 15th, before going through Bribey Island, Sydney, Melbourne, Ballarat, Adelaide and Newcastle, and finishing up on the Gold Coast on April 30th, so... We just touched on this a little bit before, but are you guys packed and ready to go? Well, almost. I'm, yeah. just, starting to, I'm just starting to pull out the boots. <laughs> start with the boots. And it, it was great to hear the list of shows said by an Australian because we've been looking at that list for the last two weeks, and now I know where we're playing. So thank you. <laughs> you know how to pronounce all the places properly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I appreciate that. <laughs> yeah well we we just got back from south america so i didn't really unpack but i did wash everything and kind of change some of the <laughs> change some ideas but yeah that's we're nice <laughs> <laughs> cool. and it's, it's a long run of shows guys so how do you prepare mentally and physically for a tour like this well we know we know eric does his homework last <laughs> uh, for me i start i start to imagine the stage I mean, I start to imagine the people and the place and then I start to imagine what I would wear and like I say I start with my feet because you you don't want to get up there with bad shoes <laughs> it just bum your night out <clears throat> yeah well yeah I play barefoot on the drum set no no gloves no shoes or socks but um, luckily I've got a room with a drum set here at the house. So I've been playing uh, every day and, uh, taking care of like the, the mental side, keeping stimulated creatively, you know, that's real important because the physical thing, I've always keep it in tuned up. My stamina and my, my endurance is always like number one importance and always trying to stay that creative juice so I can get up there and just hit the, hit the stage running. I'm not sure if yeah. anyone's told you guys yet, but we're in a bit of a heat wave over here at the moment as well. So it's very hot. So make sure you pack some singlets and some stuff like that because pretty much everywhere is really hot. Really? Oh. I'll wow. tell you that now. And you get over here with no jumpers and you'll, it'll be cold and he'll be hating on me. <laughs> <laughs> they told me it was cold. They told me 60s. Oh, well, I'm, I'm from Cairns in the far north Queensland. So anything under 25 degrees is cold to me and, and I've been hot the whole time. So it's... It does get yeah. pretty, pretty bloody hot. <laughs> wow. Cool. Thank That's you. good. So what, what can Australian fans expect from Jane's Addiction on these runner shows? They can expect 110% from the band, 100% output of energy. Any amount of energy that we have is, is left on the floor. And uh, that's how it's been. That's how it was in South America. That's how it was all last fall. So... You know, we we will only bring the same level to uh, a place that that goes as hard as Australia. So we know how hard Australia it can go because we had a manager who was perhaps our favorite manager that we've ever had up until our new manager, our newest <laughs> manager. Ian. That's right. But yeah. prior to Ian, there was a man, and I understand he's a legend in australia his name was T ted gardner he passed away about two years ago but ted led us to the promised land and when we we met ted we were like a ragtag bunch of just lost young souls and we uh ended up to follow this gigantic gregarious happy-go-lucky lost soul. <laughs> we were like following a guy who was also truly didn't know where he was going, but he had a great smile on his face, so we figured what the hell. And it ended up, by the time we ended up working with Ted, he moved back to Australia before he, uh, in his last years, but we were able to yeah. accomplish bringing the band up to Lollapalooza level. And then um, after that, you know, Ted went on to manage Tool, but he went back home and um, he passed on. But 
we're all kind of going to be going down there and in his memory i think we're going to be um thinking about ted keeping ted in our hearts while we're down there so yeah. it's, it's going to be an intense i think it's going to be enriching and and fulfilling you know when time. he has ted's first trip to america was with the band men at work and he met the Frank Zappa team because Frank's drummer at the time, Chad Wackerman, and some of Frank's musicians played for Men at Work because Men at Work didn't bring all their musicians with them. So Ted started working with Frank after Men at Work. And when I met Ted, we had some stories in common because I used to play with Frank's kids when I was a 12-year-old. But at the same time, Ted was working with Frank when I was 12 visiting the house. Isn't that strange? Wow. But, but he wasn't but managing. He was, no. he was like tour, tour managing. Tour manage, yeah. Tour right. managing Frank uh. and tour managing men at work. Yeah, just getting yeah, getting it done on the on the tour. But um it's just so small, such a small world. But you know, Ted for us, we were about to break up Lollapalooza, I think ninety. And Ted's like, you gotta come back to the to my homeland. So we kept it together for another two months and we yeah. went to Australia. Yeah. And we played. The band was on the fritz. And then on yeah. the way home, we actually broke up in Hawaii with like, you know, it all worked out. You know, we're here now and we're happier for it. But that was um that was our trip with Ted back then. But yeah, it's gonna be great. But like Eric said, the the energy, the songs written in 1986 still are relevant lyrically and musically. There's three guys up there. Josh Klinghoffer is just a, an incredible musician with spirit for for ye for days, and what the energy is all funneled together because we only get an hour, and that's enough. But we fly for 16 hours, we drive for 14 hours, we you know we get an hour on stage. Can you imagine how how hyped up we are to, when Perry says three, four? We are just ready for the, you know, the levy breaks, basically. And um, and then, you know, at that hour, the hour's over. And we can, you know, it, be a band again, still with other instruments, hanging out in the van, backstage, at the hotel. It's been really a rebirth. In the water. Than... Yeah, exactly. Go in the water, though. We can go hang out with those kangaroos like we did. The room, yeah, and it's like a rebirth on stage, off stage, and the future of. It's been really just a you know, a great thing for us to to have these good shows to play, great bands to play with, new audiences to play for, and now we can write new music about it all. And of course, whatever all of us, the whole globe has been through in the last three years, four years, with the whole squeeze of everything. I don't want to take you know, you know, we don't have to go there, but there's a lot to talk about. Musically and oh. lyrically. Yeah, oh. <laughs> exactly. You know, yeah. one thing COVID did that was good for Australia, it started to repair the ozone layer because planes weren't flying and the ozone started to heal up. And the carbon fluorides from the spray cans, I guess they were not allowed anymore. So there's one thing that you can point to that COVID did right was it did start to heal nature a little bit good point do you, do you remember that first time you heard about the what you were spraying on your armpits was hurting the ozone yeah how how long ago that was and it was it was remarkable it was like we are hurting that it, this is insane and then we knew all the other things and the whole story came out now every kid three years old on knows but back then we no one knew a handful of people knew and they kept it they kept feeding us and we consumed it because we didn't know. But can you imagine all those little things we could have stopped years ago, but now we're on the right track. Yeah. Yeah. Very cool, guys. And the tour also features a traveling wrestling component as well. So you guys get into the wrestling much? <laughs> well, I, I was a wrestler in high school and college. That's it. My career ended there. <laughs> there weren't enough chicks watching wrestling back in those days. <laughs> <That was just, laughs> very true. Those outfits just aren't very conducive to um to perv, are they? <laughs> <No>. <laughs> yeah. 
that, that some is, guys can get away. Some guys can get away with anything on stage. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> yeah. But how do you think they're going to go together, like the live music and the wrestling? I think they'll. I think they'll go pretty well. It could. I don't know. We those wrestlers are not ours. Yeah. Yeah, that's not our show. That's that's uh, Smashing Pumpkins show. Okay. Yeah. But it ought to be interesting. Yeah. But you, you know, know one of my favorite music. Matchup? Is it going to be an artist what? matchup chat there where the bands wrestle each other? I wouldn't mind that. <laughs> You've got the experience, mate. So you only one one point up. <laughs> but only full contact. <laughs> oh, look out! It's been called. <laughs> Eric's called it. <laughs> yeah, one of one of our favorite musicians from Los Angeles, Mike Watt. When he plays his bass, he calls it wrestling. He wrestles it. He wrestles with the bass. <laughs> It'd be perfect. <laughs> and the tour also features Australian bands Abel and the Sniffers, Red Hook and Battlesnake. So do you guys know much about them? Yeah. Um, Amel and the Sniffers, I, I saw them when they came here to LA with my son. Good and uh, I like I really liked uh, that song about the angels that she, the video with the angels. I thought, all right, this girl's she's going to hit. She's going to hit big, you know? And um, we went down there and she was just as great as uh, I had wished and hoped. The next thing you know, we're on a bill together. So mm -hmm. I'm excited because, you know, it can get, when you're on the road, you're, you're performing with a few groups. You become kind of like a summer camp, you know. But if your summer camp is full of people that, you don't get along with or uh you know summer camp can be very long and arduous and boring and dull yeah. but i figure with amel i'm excited to make her acquaintance and i know that uh she's going to get along and we're going to get along with her group so i'm i'm excited about touring with them and we sort of touched on this a bit before, guys, and we won't go into too much detail because we're running out of time, but you guys have been going since the mid-'80s, so why do you think it's still as popular today as, as ever? Like, people are coming out to see this show because you guys are on it. Like, what do you put the enduring success of Jane's Addiction down to? Could it be my glowing skin? Mm. <laughs> <laughs> you took the, took the words right out of my mouth, Perry. Wow, that was quick. You got it. <laughs> my moist ruby red lips yeah. no uh i probably i would probably say that from the very beginning we we wanted to be great and we wouldn't accept anything less we lived and breathed ate music and and trying to be a great group you know when we were coming up you know, we looked up to people like, you know, we got to, we got a chance to open for Iggy, the Ramones, members of Bauhaus, it was Love and Rockets. But we had, we admired these people, you know, Lou Reed, David Bowie, list goes on and on, you know, Beatles, Stones, The Who, Jimi Hendrix, The Doors. And we were living in LA where the door, you know, a lot of the music industry was. And we just felt, when we all met up, there was this kind of like kinetic energy running through us that we wanted to be in league with them. So it's it's really just trying that hard and not giving up is is made for the longevity of Jane's addiction. Oh. You know, and, and there's a there's a sound that we had when we first met. Even if it's a slow ballad that's laid back, it feels urgent. It feels like there's something that needs to be said and we cannot stop, but we have to say it. And that still feels real. It, we're not posing or faking or having just a, just doing it. It has to be said. It feels urgent. I thought it was because you had to go to the bathroom. <laughs> I really do. I'll be right back. <laughs> uh, all right, guys. Well, thanks very much for your time today. It's been an absolute pleasure speaking with all of you. Um, the tour, World is a Vampire Tour, kicks off in Brisbane on April the 15th. And as we said before, it goes 
all over Australia. So I'll be at the uh, Brisbane show, guys. So travel safe. Brisbane. We'll see you in Brisbane. All right. Thank we'll see you, you in sir. Brisbane, man. All right. Nice to meet you. Have a good day. Thanks, good day. Bro.